folks, it's the Ghost Saboteur here, and welcome back to another video in the hardware section of my Basics of Teletype series. And in today's video, we'll be talking about CVs, and in particular, two ops that we use fairly often with the Teletype. As you'll no doubt remember from the introduction videos, CVs are sent from the four CV outputs on the front panel of the Teletype, each numbered one to four. And each of these four outputs work with a voltage range of 0 to 10 volts. When we refer to these CV outputs in programming, we unsurprisingly use the operator CV. So let's take a closer look. The CV operator is used to set a CV output to a specific value, or to get the value that that output is currently set to. The command structure for CV is super simple. In the same way that we use the TR op, the first value that the CV op requires is used to specify the CV output we want to use. We use a second value with this op if we want to set the CV output to a certain level. CVs on Teletype work with a value range of 0 to 16384, meaning at a value of 0, the output voltage would be 0 volts and at 16,384, the output voltage would be 10 volts. So like me, when I first started using Teletype, you're probably thinking zero to 16,384 is a really unhelpful value range to do anything musical with. Well, luckily, Monome have provided a number of ops that allow us to better translate these values to something more convenient, as we'll soon see. So to demonstrate how the CV op works with the value range 0 to 16,384, I've set up this really simple patch, um, which is basically the beer, uh, which is running through um, a filter, and then through the Desmodus for some of the Desmodus magic. And the beer is being triggered by trigger output 1 from the teletype, the cutoff frequency of the filter is being changed by CV output 1, and then CV output 2 is affecting the pitch of the beer. So to start off, we just need to go to our iScript and set the speed of our metronome, which I'm going to set to trigger every one and a half seconds. So if we go over to the metronome, the first line of the script over here is going to be for our CV output 1, which is controlling the cutoff. So CV1, and I'm going to set the value of that to 1000. The next one will be CV2, which is again is controlling our pitch here, and I'm going to set that to zero. And then lastly, I'm going to trigger the beer using TRP1. So now, if we change the value of CV1, just increase it by a thousand, you should be able to hear the cutoff frequency of the filter start to open up. And likewise, if we change the CV value for CV output 2 and the pitch. We can hear a raise in the pitch of the beer. As I mentioned earlier, we do have ops to convert these values to something more manageable. And the first ones I'd like to cover are V and VV. With these ops, the V stands for volts, and the job of V is to split the 0 to 16,384 range into 1 volt chunks. So in the case of the pitch CV, CV2, we can type CV2, V, 0, Add that to the script. If I just activate the script, and 
And now if I change that to V1, we can hear the pitch change. And because in the Eurorack world we work in volts per octave, raising the voltage by one volt changes the octave by one. Much like a precision adder. But what if we wanted a greater resolution? Well, for this we use VV. So where V splits the 0 to 16,384 range into 10, VV splits the range into 1,000. So if we wanted to send 1 volt out of CV2, then we would type CV2 VV 100. And again, we could change it by one octave. As musicians, working with voltages and weird valley ranges is not perhaps the most intuitive thing when trying to write music. And for this reason, the N-op exists. N, for me at least, stands for note, and converts note numbers into voltages that our 1 volt per octave Eurorack systems understand. The range of the N-op is split into semitones, so instead of using VV, if we were to type N0 and start the sequence, and change that to N0, 12, we would hear the pitch of the oscillator raise by one octave. And again we can go to 24 for another octave higher, or perhaps we'd want a fifth of the root, or a seventh. Simple. So while the standard CV values and voltage ops are a great way of experimenting with CV, using the N method can be a much more useful op to work with when dealing with sequences of notes. Rest assured we'll be doing a little bit more with the N op and all of its variants in a later video alongside ops that are great for changing CV like randomness, chaos and the use of variables. The CV.slu op adds a rise and fall time to changes in a CV signal. Simply put, it works in a similar way to applying slide or portamento to a CV and is great for smoothing a modulation signal. Just like the CV op, the first value that the CV.slu op requires is used to specify which output we want to use. The second is the amount of time you wish to set the output slu to, and this value is specified in milliseconds. And so to demonstrate this, I've set up pretty much the same patch as the previous example, except this time I've got some random values between 0 and 9000 being sent to the cutoff frequency of the filter. In CV2, which is our beer pitch, I've now got some N values being sent out, which are going to be random values between 0 and 12. CV3 is going to be for our decay of the beer, just to add a bit of variety, and that's random values between 0 and 1000. And then at the top of the script, you'll see that we now have cv.slu2, which refers to CV2, and it's currently set to the value of 0 milliseconds, so that's no effect, no slu whatsoever. So if I start the sequence, <laughs> We can hear the sequence running now, and I'll just increase the value of the slew very gently, and you should be able to hear the effect. Mm -hmm. 
And just as a side note to this, if, uh, if you navigate to the variables page here, you can see at the top there we've got one of the icons, the kind of divide sign flashing away. This is just an indicator that there is some slew added to the program somewhere and just it's just an indicator to show you that that's happening. So that's it for CVs and I really hope this video has given you a bit more insight into using CVs with Teletype. It's one of my most used ops and when manipulating it with other ops it can be a great starting point I think for you to really begin to see some of the magic that the Teletype has to offer. If you did enjoy the video please feel free to like and subscribe. Your support as always is really appreciated. I also always look forward to reading any comments we have a great community of synth lovers here and it's fantastic to hear from you. So thanks again and I'll see you next time. Cheers.